Anyone who's ever done any missionary work is probably familiar with Jesus' departing words. In Matthew chapter 28, we're told he said, Go and make disciples of all nations. This is what's commonly referred to as the Great Commission. You see, Christians have a responsibility to go throughout the world and teach people what Jesus has taught. We have a duty to spread the good news through all the earth because Jesus is the way to heaven. And people can't believe if they're never told about him. But what happens if somebody never hears about Jesus? What if someone grew up in an isolated culture? Does God have a plan for them or are they just out of luck? And if God does allow them to go to heaven, does that not contradict Jesus's famous statement, nobody comes to the Father except through me? But what happens when people have never been exposed to the gospel? And what does the Bible have to say? Let's take a look. Attention, bargain shoppers. So there is a standard Christian answer to this question. We look at the verse Romans 1.20, which reads, For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse. And for many, this is a satisfactory answer. People may not know the details about God, but they can get the gist of it by looking at a sunset. Obviously, it would be better if they could hear the gospel, but if you live in a remote area, then a sunset will be However, from a theological standpoint, things are not as cut and dry as that. I mean, I believe there is some truth in that. Solomon commented in Ecclesiastes that eternity is written on our hearts, meaning that there is something inside each one of us that points to a creator. But creation alone cannot show us God's love, for example. It can show us his power, his order, but nothing about Jesus, nothing about God's character. And judging only on creation alone, one might be forgiven for drawing the wrong conclusions about God. I mean, pretty much every single living creature on earth, other than humans, meets their end by being savagely killed and eaten. Things die, there is decay, there's disease, starvation, harsh storms, environmental conditions. And so there's problems answering that question with this verse alone. Keep in mind too, Paul was writing that verse in Romans to the church in Rome, an epicenter of culture. He wasn't writing to some distant tribal people. He was writing to a group of people who knew about God, who had heard the stories and knew who God was, and they rejected him anyway. And Paul's saying that that is without excuse. In fact, a few verses earlier, in Romans 1.17, Paul writes, For in the gospel of Christ, the righteousness of God is revealed. So it's through the gospel of Christ, through knowing about Christ and Christ's actions that God is revealed, not through nature. So getting back to the original question, in theology, revelations about God are broken down into two types. Number one, we have general revelation. And this is what Romans 1.20 is referring to. We know that there is a creator because of creation. We know that there is something that governs our universe. This is plain for all to see. Theologian John Calvin once wrote, There is within the human mind, and indeed by natural instinct and awareness of divinity, to prevent anyone from taking refuge in the pretense of ignorance. God himself has implanted in all men a certain understanding of his divine majesty. And we see this supported elsewhere in scripture. Psalm 19, 1 through 4 says, The heavens declare the glory of God." skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They use no words. No sound is heard from them, yet their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. So that is the first way that God is revealed to us, general revelation. And the second way is called special revelation in theology. This is when God reveals himself through direct communication with us. It's through scripture, through a dream, through a miracle, through a vision, something along those lines. So the real question, is general revelation enough? Or can a person be saved through general revelation alone? And there are some differing opinions here. People can agree and disagree, but generally speaking, most theologians would say that general revelation is not not sufficient to give that knowledge of God, of his will, which is necessary for salvation. General revelation does not reveal anything about Jesus Christ, of his work or his redemption for sinners. Special revelation is required. This is the revelation which points to salvation. And so this can be a difficult concept to grapple with and is definitely a support for missionaries or for spreading the gospel. If we look at Romans 10:14, we're told, how then can they call on the one they have not believed in 
And how can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? Now, I might be tempted to just say, well, does that mean isolated people are out of luck? Does God not have a plan? And to this, I would respond, God does call on us to preach his gospel, to spread the word about him, the good news. But he's also not dependent on people. Romans 10, 20, we're told, I was found by those who did not seek me. I revealed myself to those who did not ask for me. There are stories in scripture where God has sent a messenger to a remote people, specifically to teach them about God. Other scripture where angels appear to people. Other scripture where God speaks to people directly. I don't have an answer for every situation. When it comes to like every specific extreme example out there, I do know that there is an element of trusting God to have a plan and to have the power to reveal himself to whoever he chooses. But scripture is clear that acknowledging God's existence is not enough. And those who do deny his existence have no excuse. So there you have it. I hope you found that interesting. If you did, please feel free to like and subscribe. It does help out the channel or leave a comment below. I will leave in the description the scripture which is used today. My name is Adam. This is Bargain Bin Theology. And remember, you get what you pay for.